welcome back. As you can see already, I'm tired of tying the small stuff. We're going back to the streamers. Uh, in the streamer world, this is nowadays considered small. Um, it's not articulated. We're going to go a little bit old school. And we're going to go with a Kelly Gallup Zoo Cougar. Um, for a single hooked fly. Easily the funnest fly that I've ever fished single hooked. Um, it darts, dances all through the water. It's just, you can track it because it's yellow. I mean, you can see it from space. It's phenomenal. I mean, you get to see all your eats. It's just a fun fly to fish. Um, we're going to go with a size 4 Mustad. Let me make sure I get this right. I don't tie with these too often. R73-9671. That's a mouthful right there. Um, get this pointed my way and we'll get started. Advance our thread to the back just like everything else. Find the barb of your hook. Set your thread there. Come two or three wraps forward. We're going to go with a the marabou plume, um, just slightly longer than the shank of the hook. Set this in, and then back to the barb. Leave the rest of this in for bulk for now. Throw some internal flash, two strands of gold flashaboo, doubled over. Advance it to where you left off with your marabou stack. Bring it on the opposite side and just kind of lay it over like all the other streamers we've done so far. A lot more to come, a lot more dries, nymphs, a little bit of everything, but I can only. I don't know. I still like tying and fishing dry flies, but streamers are just. I don't know. They're just as fun to tie as they are to fish. That's a lie. It's a lot more fun fishing them. But I do enjoy tying them too. And take your second stack. Right to the back there. You can see our tail with the internal flash built in. Now take your thread. If I can get out of my own way here, we can advance this up to the front and right about there. Um, from tying these for a while, I kind of know where I want my head to start uh, with the deer hair, but I don't know how else to explain this really. I mean, maybe a quarter of an inch back. I just from like I said, from tying so many of these, I, I know where to start. So we'll, my reference will be just a quarter of an inch back. Try not to let any more thread past that point. That way you know um, not to put any more material back there so you still have room to put your collar and your deer hair head in. Um, the best way to do it probably is just um, if you can find one, if you're if you're new to this, if you've never tied them before, if you can find one in the store, just kind of line it up right next to it, and you can see just about where your head's going to start. Um, that's assuming that you can find a shop that carries well tied flies. Um, for our body on this. We're going to create a dubbing loop, and I think when Kelly first did this, he used like the pearl braid. Um, we're going to use pearl ice dub, which I think I watched a video of his here recently to where he has switched to the ice dub. Um, I use it in about all of my streamers, just about all of them that have. Um, if there's a dubbing option for the body, I'm going to use the I'm going to use the ice dub. It just 
it's really easy to work with. I can control my taper and I just like the look of it. So grab your material and find the side that we want for our taper. Throw this in here. Spread this out and give it a spin. Now with this you can kind of work through um, if there's something that's a little bit too bulky you can move it around. Don't spin this dubbing really tight. You want it pretty loose. That way you're still able to manipulate it. You can still move it around how you want. And I left that a little bit short on purpose. That way I'm going to tie my other two materials in before I start my tail. I'm not going to have a tendency to rush my head. Um, I'm still going to have room to work with my deer hair while getting my other materials in. Um, for our underwing on this, we're going to take just a we'll zoom out a touch. I haven't checked my monitor in a minute, but we're going to zoom out and we're going to take just a little bit of calf tail. Now, I could get really in-depth in this and make this a half-hour video between this and deer hair, but uh, we'll try and keep this pretty straightforward and not talk too awful much. The stuff up at the top gets really sparse, um, can be pretty difficult to work with. This right here, you'll see it has a lot of crinkles and it just has more texture to the body of the material if that makes any sense so you want to pretty much pick from just above the base to probably your halfway point is where you're going to find your best material at so that's what i tend to use right there it's just a little bit easier to work with you get more bulk with less material so we'll go ahead and zoom back in I'm going to clean this stuff out in my comb. Now, Kelly has his video out there when you're cutting for the Cougar uh, Pearl Necklace. Uh, there's a couple videos of his that I've watched. When you're cutting non-compressible material like calf tail, you want to cut it at an angle. So what we're going to do is just set this right here. We're going to cut the, see the angle that we have. This way when you tie it in, you're going to save bulk and not have one material like if you if if, if you cut it straight and you have two or three come out eventually everything's going to come out and the whole body or the whole overwing is going to be lost. So if you cut this in an angle, it allows you to get direct pressure down on every single fiber that you have in here. I mean, you can see I'm pulling on this pretty dang good and you're not going to lose anything. So, we'll just go back through, really wrench down on that and your materials are set. Next up, we're going to take a single mallard flank and let me get this. You can see this just like the boogeyman. Um, this is the critical part to this fly. You can see the shaft on this is nice and straight. Materials are even on both sides. Um, nice curve to it. A nice natural curve. It's not curved too much. Just enough to where it's going to kind of cup everything else. Um, I buy these. Um, I buy these in the packs that they normally come in, and then I separate them myself. If you're really lucky, you're gonna get a half dozen good ones. If you're grading them properly, you're gonna get about a half dozen out of a package. Um, typically, you're gonna get about three or four that are usable. So you wind up 
throwing a lot away, but pre-sorting them will save you so much time in the long run. And you can use the other ones for, you know, the ones that don't make the grade, you can use those for dry flies and whatever you may choose to use them for. Um, we're going to take the shaft of this and run it right down the center. It's going to be a little bit longer than the marabou. So you're going to take this and just pinch it down. You have a couple loose wraps. And then you can really tighten down on it. And you can see, I'll point this to where we're able to look right down the center. This shaft is going right down the center of your of your hook shank. It's not canted to one side. There's the underside of it right there. And this is absolutely critical because if your flank feather is kicked to one side or the other, your fly is going to track that way and it's not going to swim properly in the water. Probably a little far back on that, but I think we should be pretty close. I get really picky when it comes to distances and everything. We're going to take our yellow deer hair, and I'm going to zoom out so we can see this a little bit better. Same thing when we tied the dungeon or any time you work with deer hair heads. Um, like I said in that one, if you think you have enough, cut a little bit more. You're going to take this and run it through your comb, and you cannot clean deer hair enough. Here's all the stuff that your cross or your directional hair, your fuzz, everything. That's all the stuff that's going to make it a lot tougher to work with your deer hair. It's not going to cooperate with you if you keep all that stuff in there. So you clean it up the best you can. Throw this in your stacker. You're going to have a nice bulky head or a nice bulky collar for this. And there's one that got out of control. And throw it in your stacker, run it through there. You can see the nice even tips. And not enough to grab there. Get the stacker out of the way. Grab this with your other hand. And we're going to measure this out. When I measure out my collars, and there's a few that are getting away from me. When I measure out my collars, I want them either to end between, I want them to end between the point and the barb of my hook. That's the reference that I use. I'd like to stick closer to the point, but if you get a little bit longer, it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, so we're going to take this, once we have it measured out, and I'm going to readjust this in my hands here because it's going to be easier to work with. Once you have this measured out, just clip it. All that excess we don't want to work with. We don't want to incorporate that in our head. And there we go. There's one loose wrap, two starting to work this in a little bit further. And the third one you can really wrench down on and then push down on this and you can see you have the nice half moon shaped collar and you can see it's nice a bulky collar and on the underside you're completely clean you can still see the pearl body and at this point what I like to do is I'll just run right back through this and I'll throw a quick half hitch right here. And 
Well, the head of this one might wind up being a little bit bigger than what I typically tie. I think we're still going to be pretty close. Once again, I'm nitpicking a lot here. So I'll take... little chunk of deer hair run it through our comb, clean it up, get all the fuzz all of the excess out and then I take and I cut my tips off like I explained in the dungeon video just makes when I when I actually go in to to cut and trim this thing just makes it easier for me to distinguish between my collar and my head Give it one loose wrap, two, and then a third, pull down, and you'll see your deer hair spin. See how everything kind of rotates there? Take and just, just push this back with your hands. Don't worry about getting a hair stacker and running it through there and making this head so tight. You want the head to be loose to where you, when you're on your back cast, water's going to shed easily. You're not going to be keeping a ton of water in there, and it's going to be easier to work with for you. Grab your second stack. Oh, dear hair. Give that a quick trim, run it through your comb. Now this one here isn't necessary to cut your tips off. You can if you want, um, but it's not necessary. I'm going to give my thread a spin. And we'll pull down on this one, two and a half. And there's the spin of our deer hair. Peel this back. And I think the head on this one's going to wind up being better than what I was expecting. I thought I was going to have way too much material there, but I think it's going to be pretty good. Pull this back and whip finish. doing underneath our flank feathers still running right down the center and we'll get zoomed in so we can trim this one up finish this fly off get rid of some material on the table I'm gonna make a little bit more of a mess here before it's all said and done so go ahead and grab your double-sided razor blade and flip your fly upside down. Give yourself a good stable base and then take your razor and a nice flush cut on the bottom. Nice. Uh, this razor blade's just about ready for the trash. I can feel it starting to stick and grab a little. There's the black dog. Grab your blade, give it a quick bend, and then we're going to push it right up through the head. And this is just giving us the overall shape of the head. Work it back to your collar. Don't get real close to your collar because we're going to use our thumbnail to separate everything and give it a better looking head. So I'll pull my collar away. 
still keep the bend and then I'll run my razor blade right up to the right up to my thumbnail and this will give you that nice clean break that you're looking for um, just kinda separates your collar from your actual head and like I said I mean it just looks better overall I, as far as the functionality of the fly is concerned it's not a big deal but for looks I like to do it for that reason it just looks better I got one or two here that I want to get trimmed up if I can get them out of the way actually you know what I think we're just gonna I'm just gonna live with it and call this good not gonna get too picky pull this out of the vise and turn it away from us and give it one trim right down the side this will just continue to shape our head and it's easier like I've explained before it's easier to cut against the grain from behind it than it is cutting with it and you can see this side got a little bit heavier I can trim that up later I'm not gonna do it while we're filming but that side got a little bit heavier but you can see the nice break that we have let me get this right here you can see the nice break that we have from our head to the collar the collar going back about to the point of the hook the flank going right down the center and that is Kelly Gallup's Zoo Cougar. And that's really going to bug me. I'm going to have to trim that up here. But uh, we'll get that looking better. But that will give you the idea of what you're looking for on this pattern. Um, like I said, I mean, it's just one of... As far as a single hook streamer pattern goes, this is it. I mean, this will be the one that I put on. Um, I've ever, just like everybody else, they like throwing the articulated stuff, but this is the one that I'll go to for a single hooked pattern. It's just so fun to fish, so active in the water. But if you have any questions or comments, shoot them to me. I'll get back to you as always, and we'll catch you on the next fly. Thanks.